Hey, the official podcast, back at it again. We got wacky stuff going on in the world, which means we got to get even sillier to discuss it. Kick us off, Jackson. Why? What, what's going on in America? Is some kind of new illness going around that's affecting all my friends? I remember getting so much shit for how much I get sick, but he, he, Andrew's not here now. He's sick. What's going on? Huh? Yeah, you, you, you guys are, none of you are getting, taking your vitamins. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, Kai is the only one in like perfect health. <laughs> I know. First it was Jackson, then Charlie, then Andrew. We're going out of Jack yeah, order, too, one by which one. is upsetting, but still. Oh, yeah, you yeah, you're well, definitely going to be yeah. next. You're next though. Like it's out of order, but you're going to be next. I already I can sense it. I can hear it in your voice. I am going to be uh traveling soon, so maybe. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, but you traveled internationally, right? In between mm -hmm. sicknesses. So mm -hmm. if it was going to happen, I, I feel like it would have happened by now. When was the last time you were sick, Kyle? Because I don't uh, think I I've don't know. seen last you sick. Last year? I think last year when I flew back from America to Germany, I was a little sick, but that was it. I don't even know if that was COVID. It's airplanes. I, I think the next biggest uh, technological advancement that's going to make people billions is finding a way to like clean, sterilize, and make airplane travel safe. Like safe. It's called the HEPA filter. Illnesses. The HEPA filters on the airplanes are supposedly healthier or at least cleaner than like indoor air down on Earth. So is it is it the is the airplane fine? It's just the airport. No, well, probably the airport, but the, the airplane, the reason you get sick traveling isn't necessarily because the airplane itself is dirty or anything. It's just because there's so many people there in such tight space. Plus, you How just do we touch stop the it? surfaces and whatnot. Yeah, get a better yeah, immune system. Surfaces, I'm pretty sure. You shouldn't be dropping like flies to the cough to the point where you can't even like breathe or cough 20. Doesn't getting sick increase your immune system? Aren't you meant to like get a lot of illnesses while you're young so that your immune yeah, system's stronger? Not like every month. <laughs> like you guys apparently seem well, I'm to, not, or at least you. No, I, no, no. As a kid, probably you train yourself by like playing in the mud and eating worms and shit. Yeah. 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 I never ate worms. I only ate ants. That's I don't insane. know if there's any nutritional value there. Probably not. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the hell I'm immune I ate, against so. all ant-based diseases. <laughs> what affects <laughs> ants? Oh, uh, I know. Those fucking like the mushroom cordy cordyceps. Yeah, cordyceps yeah. shit. Like the uh, brain virus. So I'll be fine in a zombie apocalypse, potentially. I hate fungus. It's always so creepy. Any sort of like fungal or like mold that creeps me the hell out. When you see a black spot in like the corner of someone's bathroom, you're like, oh shit, did I just inhale that? And yeah. then they paint over it, by the way, too. Uh, uh, Brady was showing, our moderator Brady was showing us photos of his the upper corner of his shower area, and it had black spots. And we told him, Brady, that could be black mold. You have to get rid of that. And he said, no, don't worry, I painted over it. And we said, that's not how it works. You can't just paint <laughs> over black molds. And well, to be fuzzy. fair, maybe they might have killed it. The paint could have killed it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, because here's the I thing. I would trust that it, was, yeah. I don't know how long that go that was now, but he recently got pneumonia. And I looked it up. I asked AI, can you get pneumonia from mold infections? And it said, yeah, it's possible. So <laughs> isn't that like the leading cause of pneumonia? I don't know if it's the leading cause. Isn't it just being cold? Don't like homeless people dry of pneumonia when they have to be yeah, out yeah. in the winter it's or something? Like being cold. I don't know if mold is the leading yeah. cause. I just know that you, growing up, I've always been told you can't just paint over mold. You have to remove it first. How do you remove mold? Is it just some specific... I've never seen mold in my house or houses that I've lived in, so I'm not sure. It's actually pretty simple. You, you just clean it like normal. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. There's you can no just special literally... kind of... Well, then, it, sounds like it's more, it sounds like it's more effort to paint over it. Well, unless there's like a huge outbreak or something of it, then you can probably just do it the same way you'd clean anything else, just with like disinfection, their disinfecting spray and wipe it down. It's moisture that causes uh, those the, the mold, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, so it makes sense that it would be in the shower. I've never seen it before. I don't know what causes it. I, I've, I mean, I've obviously seen it on like bread and stuff like that, um, but never like in my house. So I've never dealt with it. That's good. I guess you don't have mold-induced COVID then. That only leaves no, just 
I don't know, 99 no. other things why you get, keep getting sick. Yeah. Take your vitamins. I, I, it's just travel. It's literally just travel. I just keep touching things when I'm traveling. That's it. I mean, I fucking stuck a needle through my thumb. You think I'm, I'm that careful with shit? It's, it's just travel-based illnesses. I'm fine when I'm home. That's true. That's fair. That's fair. Well, everybody pray for our buddy Andrew that he may not die. <laughs> We're going to need him in the future episodes. So get better, Andrew. He is pretty bad, apparently. Like, uh, he's had it for like a week and a half now. And I thought he would be better by now. But no, apparently he's still pretty bad. Mm, yeah, I think he said he has a sore throat, which I get. You don't want to talk when you're like that. Yeah. So yeah. should we be mean and talk about something that I'm sure he will be very sad to miss, which is the Game Awards, which I think people <laughs> really want us to talk about. Yeah, we, we can talk about the Game Awards, sure. Well, he likes games. So I assume he would have had some takes. Um, he didn't not really so... play any of the games nominated this yeah. year, though, except for Mario Wonder. So I don't think he'd be very opinionated. No, that's her. So what is all nominated? You guys do the intro. I'll leave the bulk of this to you because I, I'm not really... I'm sure I, you've talked I've about it by like now, Charlie. Three of the... Yeah. What, what, what's yeah. nominated, Charlie? It's Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Mario Wonder, and Tears of the Kingdom. That's your Game of the Year cast. Man, I'm going to have such a hot take here. I don't think Spider-Man 2 deserves to be on the list, and I don't think... Oh man, this is this is going to get me shit. I don't think Tears of the Kingdom deserves to be on the list either. Ooh, that one's going to get you shit for me because I very much disagree. Yeah. For me, oh, this come. was between Baldur's Gate 3 and Tears of the Kingdom. Really? Mm-hmm. I just don't think that either of those games did an, enough for me personally to differentiate themselves from the what they came from. Spe you especially Spider-Man Spider 2. Yeah. Okay, not Baldur's I, Gate. I, I, I definitely say, what the fuck yeah, are you no, talking about? Baldur's Gate 3 is going to win. I think we can all say that pretty confidently. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Spider-Man 2 and Tears of the Kingdom. For me, I don't think that they should be on the list, but I can see the argument for Tears of the Kingdom. I don't see the argument for Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 was just such a small incremental step up from the original Marvel Spider-Man, and I think they were just far better games this year. Like, I only gave it an 8 out of 10 in my personal review. Yeah. It was a safe game. Like, the, I agree. I, I don't know what I'd put there in its place. I know for you it'd be Talos Principle too, because you're a fucking fanatic. But yeah. for me, I don't know what else really would go is. there. Jackson keeps sending me Jackson keeps sending <laughs> me these lengthy paragraphs and messages about the Talos <laughs> Principle too. You have to play it in a philosophy. He's sending me like blog articles from the it's so writers good. and whatnot. And I, I just keep nerd emojiing him. <laughs> 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 and there's so nothing good. like I'm not even dunking on the game itself or anything that he's saying. It's just fun to tease Jackson with the nerd emoji. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't bother me, though. I know it's inherently nerdy. <laughs> what you're doing doesn't bother me. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. I, tell, us, tell us Principle 2 for me. I've played Mario Wonder, Tears of the Kingdom, and we began playing Baldur's Gate 3, which is a lot of fun, as expected, even though it is, it is definitely a bit buggy. The user interface and the user experience is definitely buggy, not like the game itself. Yeah. Um. So, is it unanimous? Baldur's Gate Three is gonna just yeah. sweep it all. Yeah. Indie yeah, darling, so. everyone's mm -hmm. still talking about it to this day. Critics. Whoa! Love it's it. not an There's indie game. Sex. It is an indie game. They're independent. Okay, when you say indie, you, it, you make it sound more like a low yeah. budget kind of game because it is definitely not. Yeah. No, you can have high Warrior budget is a indie. I guess, but that's it's just never, I would indie never indie call it like, an indie game. To me, indie, me, it's like, it, there's stages of independent, first of all. There's like triple I, as someone in chat said, like that there's big independent and then there's the small independent, but there's still independent at the end of the day. Larian Studios isn't owned by any publishers or they didn't even have any publishers uh, publishing the game. So to me, that's... Would you also call From Software indie? Um, I don't, they're, they're Bandai and Nemco, aren't they? Bandai published for them. Are they? I don't, I, I looked it up because I was curious. It doesn't seem like it. It's all just FromSoft. Doesn't seem like there's an owner. Um, I was pretty sure that it was published, but I, I don't know at that point. Yeah, that, that might be more difficult for me. Um, I'd have to think about it. 
I, I definitely don't think I would consider Elden Ring like an indie game, yeah. So maybe you're right. They've part yeah. so I looked it up. They've partnered with uh, like Bandai Namco on things, but it doesn't look like they're owned by them. No, they're not. They're, no, it's not about ownership. It's about publishing. To me, that's what makes the, the difference between a AAA and a uh, and a you know published game or an independent. Um, it's like I'm pretty sure with the publishing contracts, they get they get large budgets with it. Yeah, what are you talking about? FromSoft or Larian right now with Bandai? Namco. FromSoft. Namco. Well, apparently, according to Wikipedia, Divinity 2 was also published by Bandai Namco on all versions except Windows. Hmm. Bandai Namco. Yeah, so it looks like yeah, and for, from, for FromSoft, they are self-publishers, but they work with some companies such as HTEC, Sony, and Bandai for some of their games. Probably some regions as well that they want to publish into, but they don't have the means to release into. Mm-hmm. I'll take a guess. I think Larian made. The, the, I would say Larian was probably indie until they made the Gigabucks from Divinity Original Sin Two, which I, I feel like was their breakout title that everybody just loved and yeah. enjoyed playing with their friends. Which then went into Baldur's Gate Three. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I I think the budget's high enough where maybe I wouldn't consider Baldur's Gate Three a traditional independent game at this point. So yeah, I'll I'll recede that. But still, it's like. It's a darling in the video games industry. Everyone loves it. Still talked about to this day after release, whereas all the other games really, even Tears of the Kingdom, I barely hear about Tears of the Kingdom now. Um, but I still hear about Baldur's Gate 3 That's pretty true. frequently. So I think it's a pretty safe bet. I would be shocked, beyond shocked, if it wasn't Baldur's Gate 3 that wins this one. Yeah, I would also be shocked if Baldur's doesn't win. Ooh, another hot take. I don't think, again, I, I don't think Resident Evil 4 <laughs> should be in the game of the year list either. I liked it. I didn't. I totally disagree. I didn't love it. I liked it quite a bit. I think it's totally fine to be there. Alan Wake Two, Baldur's Gate Three, and Mario Bros. Wonder. I agree with though. I think that's great. All those are great games. Um, what about the other categories? Mario Wonder was so much fun. What other categories do you care about? Lists? And I'll tell you what they were. Uh, what about games for impact? That's always a fun one. I didn't play any of the games on there, and I know for a fact you didn't either. <laughs> there's so many useless categories here. Why? Why? There's like ten categories for esports, which I, I, I'm sure you enjoy, Charlie. But like, why? Well, they weren't even so. Some of them were fine, but like for best esports team of the year, they didn't even get like the obvious one, which should have been Team Vitality for Rocket League. The the Rocket League Vitality Squad literally won every single major in Worlds. Like. The fact that they're not there is criminal. Mm. So, like, I don't even think they chose all the best candidates. Well, I was reading on Twitter before the start that there's a best esports coach nominee who hasn't coached in the last year. Who is it? Uh, Remy XTQZZZ Quanium for Team Vitality. He, he, nice. He tweeted out. That's not, not who I voted for. He, he tweeted out saying that he, he appreciates the nomination, but he hasn't coached in the last year. So it shows how much, like, I guess vetting they do. It's kind of embarrassing. Also, there's another yeah, th- there was another big drama silly. thing that I read on online when these this list first came out. Uh, best indie game. Where is it? I'm trying to find it. Can you read out the the oh, nominations? I, I know for what it? you're talking about. Where is it? Best is it? No, it's best indie game here. So the nominations yeah. are Cocoon, good game. Dave the Diver, great game. Dredge, Sea of Stars, Viewfinder, all good games. Uh, again, Talos Principle 2 should be on this list. But uh, Dave the Diver is published by Nexon, I think, right, Kaya? Is it Nexon? That's what I heard, I think. Yeah, and apparently this is a big company, so people are saying this mm. doesn't really count as indie. Yeah. Damn. That's who That's who chat voted for last night, because I haven't played any of these, so I let them choose, and they said Dave the Diver. It is a pretty good game, but again, like we, we get back into that debate where what quanti- what, what qualifies as indie. <laughs> this this game was made like published and probably received a budget by one of the largest Chinese corporations in the world, <laughs> and they're on the best independent game list. It's just pretty, pretty entertaining to me. Next song's... I think Nexon's South Korea. Well, okay. yeah, but a large Asian company, basically, definitely, like enormous. 
Um, so yeah, it shouldn't be on the list. They are huge. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I don't know. I don't know what else there is to really talk about with the Games Awards. Mm-hmm. Uh, just excited to see what what the next goober is going to do when he runs on stage, inevitably. Yeah, I don't think there'll be any drama this year. Jeff will lock it down pretty tight. It's already drama happened at back-to-back year. events. What do you mean? That was uh, the Bill Gates kid, right? Orthodox yeah, Rabbi that, Bill Gates. That was last year, right? Oh. Man, I forgot about that kid. Yeah. And then at the most recent Jeff Keighley event, they had those two goobers go up there, and I don't even remember what they did. But it's happened at both of his events back to back now. Yeah. It's pretty fucking lame. Well, here's hoping for more drama then. <laughs> I do think uh, GTA 6 will get announced. Chat's also saying that. They said that there's a trailer coming out, right? So I think that'll be at Game Awards, maybe. Yeah, early December, so it's possible. Yeah, yeah, that would be huge. I do not have high hopes for that game. It, it's so depressing because somebody was sharing clips of, from that game. It was something along the lines of, hey, I hope GTA 6 has more um, interiors that you can go into, like shops and buildings yeah. and such. And there's a video of him just entering the building and shooting the NPCs, which is literally what you do in GTA. It's like 90% of the game. It's just people fucking around. Yeah. And the responses to it were so depressing because it was just all these young people, I assume they're young, on the younger side who haven't been around for GTA 3 and 4 going, how did this get released back in the day? Skull emoji. Oh my God, y'all. <laughs> you just went in there and really committed terrorism. It's like, fuck. If this is the audience, we're screwed. Like GTA 6 is going to be Especially because it's like post twenty sixteen, it's gonna be the safest, lamest, yeah, just inoffensive. It is. I hope not. It will be. I, I, it, it's gonna lose all its edge. Although they've got a pretty good track record. Red Dead Redemption Two was still like pretty good in that regard. And you could you could still do all of those kinds of things. But also, I'm pretty sure most of the leadership for Red De- uh, for Rockstar is left by this point. Um, all the people working at the top during yeah, that. Yeah, I mean that's the issue when. When did GTA 5 come out? It's been a while, right? Yeah, 12, 12 years. It's 2013. Year 10 years then. Yeah, it's been like 10 years, man. That's like that's enough time f- to have turnover in your audience where you have a whole new generation of people now who grew up with that cancerous idea that, quote-unquote, everything has to be political. Mm. So you, you are now having to develop a game where you can't. You can't make anything actually edgy. It has to be what people now call safe edgy, and you have to pander to them. They're going to be going, yeah, yeah, where's my like Cuban flag on the wall like Spider-Man? And why is there no mission where my deaf girlfriend is spray painting graffiti in a Spider-Man game? Yeah, but you see, I don't think reason. Rock... I think Rockstar, sort of I think Rockstar is one of the few video game developers that could get away with not pandering to that audience. I don't know. I know, it's, it's hard to it say. It has to be the biggest game ever. I, I, I have no idea how much money they're going to put into this, but this is going to have to be a game that milks them billions of dollars. I don't like see a world where this online. isn't the biggest game. People have been waiting for this for 10 years, and it's Rockstar. Yeah, no, it, it will be. It 100% even if it's will be. A, for sure. Even if it's I mean. dog shit, like, it's still going to be the biggest game. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm just saying that's precisely... We're making the same point. Like This game must have cost them so much to develop. We don't know how much yet, but I assume a ton of money and they're going to want returns and they're not going to piss off the dominant culture right now, which is again, being safe and lame about everything. Just inoffensive, safe, safe edgy at the most and that's it. My biggest fear is that it's just called Grand Theft Auto and it's just a live service game. It's just multiplayer. Oh, yeah. brace, for, brace for that, because I'm already yeah, expecting it with the yeah. way that, like, the industry trends. I think that's where it's, it's going. It's so crazy. Uh, Sony, so remember PlayStation bought Bungie, uh, developers of Halo and Destiny, uh, for $3.6 billion a few years back, I think 2020, maybe 2021. Um, and th- their directive for that was, Bungie, you need to help us make uh, a bunch of live service games because we want we want that live service money. So they greenlit about, I think it was like 13 games, 13 live service games, and Bungie has been helping steer the ship on those games. Like They've been kind of like the tastemakers within Sony, deciding which projects go forward and which ones don't, which awful idea. Look at Destiny now, awful idea. But also this year, 
uh, they've they've postponed or outright cancelled half of those projects. So there is there's there's not much confidence in live service games. A lot of live service games just get outright cancelled, or once they launch, they they immediately like fall to capture an audience and and then are cancelled. I, I, it's a testament to the genre itself that these companies are still willing to even do it because all they need is one. All they need is one. That's why they're throwing like 12 or 13 at the wall. All they need is one. And then they've made so much fucking money from just that one. It's crazy. So I absolutely think GTA mm-hmm. will be a live service game. I mean, GTA already is a live service game, right? I mean, it is. It, is. Yeah. it gets updates frequently yeah. and there's shark cards and all that shit. So it Live service is just a stupid nothing term, yeah. though. Like, I, I don't like yeah. that term, in, like, in general. It's just way too all-encompassing, because everything that gets updates can technically be considered a live service game. Mm. Do, you, do you agree that Cyberpunk uh, was nominated for Best Ongoing Game, then? I think that's fine, yeah. They did a huge turnaround with it, with a 2.0, so I it's think another, that's fine. It's another difficult one for me, though, because, like, pretty much... Because it's not really yeah, ongoing. all games yeah. kind of receive updates and, and patches and stuff like that, so it's hard to really define what ongoing is i still think it's cyberpunk probably deserves it though because it it didn't make a massive turnaround but yeah for best ongoing i would assume like you know online only games personally maybe like mmos Mm. yeah yeah hard to know also while we're on the destiny train uh charlie you weren't here for this episode where i ranted about them for like 30 minutes right (laughs) it was like no i don't think so did you see that they fired like a bunch of their employees after reaching record profits. Yeah, I know yeah. about their layoffs. So um, one of the departments hit, it, hit hardest during those layoffs was their community team. They're, they're like, you know, the employees that, you know, manage their, <laughs> their community. Yeah. Guess, what award, <laughs> guess what award Destiny 2 got nominated for this year at the Game Awards? Best community support. I know. that. <laughs> I saw that and I couldn't fucking believe my eyes that it was yeah, listed it's there. It's so funny. Who who accepts that award if it wins? <laughs> None of the employees are left there now. <laughs> it's such a joke. The video games industry is just so fucking excruciatingly stupid. Like it makes the most money out of any entertainment industry and still this shit happens, yeah. man. It's so it's so fucking annoying. That still blows my mind still that it makes so much money even if you ignore the obvious you know okay the majority of it is mobile gamers you know old ladies playing candy crusher even if you put that aside it's still an enormous industry we're like the not the average that's wrong but you know a single game can make more than several disney movies put together that's crazy to me still let's take a break from all this game awards talk to talk about a company that deserves its very own award mint mobile mint mobile is the number one solution to the problem of you ending each month with a sad look on your face because you've received yet another enormous phone bill that could have been avoided how does mint mobile do this well they make it super easy to get a wireless plan with unlimited talk text and data for just 15 dollars a month that is an enormous amount of savings to competing enormous telecom companies. And you may be thinking, well, uh, that is an enormous amount of savings, so I must be missing out on something here. And let me tell you, no, you're not missing out on anything. In fact, you're gaining a hassle-free experience. All Mint Mobile plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. So whatever you're looking up, if you're listening to the official podcast or the red thread out there on your mobile plans, it'll be lightning fast and it'll be fantastic. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. You won't miss out on anything. You won't lose out on anything. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, this is how Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. That's how they're able to hit that $15 a month that we talked about just before. So you can switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just $15 a month by going to mintmobile.com slash official. That's to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free. That's mintmobile.com slash official. So yeah, seriously, cut your wireless bill to 15 dollars a month at mintmobile.com slash official it, it, it'll it'll save you so many dollars in the long run thanks to mint mobile for sponsoring the show supporting us and giving our fans a fantastic option when it comes to their wireless plans go check them out 
Um, speaking of, Disney is also not doing too hot, I guess. So maybe that's not too difficult anymore to surpass them. And profit, Didn't I just still... talk about this like two, three weeks ago? I said like, I, I said um, Disney fucking like they've got to be sweating over at Marvel headquarters because every single movie they've released since the uh, since the um, yeah since cock, the uh, yeah. Infinity War saga ended, Infinity yeah, War has has just flopped. And you guys said that they're not scared; they're they're gonna be fine. Like they just released another bomb, the the Marvels or whatever it's called. Yeah, a bomb though can't really like it's such a different scale. They're they're on such a different level that a bomb for them is the Marvels doing a hundred and ten million. Yeah, so but far. Uh, that doesn't matter when they're in the yeah, in the, but that's in the red, still. Right? I think the reason no, I, I, I said know, they'll I be know. fine. I'm just saying. I think the reason I thought I said they're fine is like. I always thought they would continue to pander to the same audience, which is just like fat Reddit men. But they're really trying to branch out, I guess. I, I never heard this term before, but the MCU, where they were really trying to force female heroes, I guess. And I suppose those are also the movies that bomb the most. I really don't know what their business plan is. Apparently now, they're trying to I don't rewrite. think it's like a... It's yeah, not a girl thing just, because we just had Barbie. We just had Barbie not. and it was a massive hit. It's an execution thing. No, it isn't. That's the thing. And Captain it Marvel isn't. did really well. That. But their characters suck. Yeah, the that's problem what I mean. It's isn't an execution that they're women. Thing. The problem is that the only character... The problem is that the only thing that they want us to like them for is here's a woman female character hero. Okay, cool. But what makes her cool? Nothing. It's just a woman. Well, that's not enough. <laughs> you can't just make man man, for instance, <laughs> and just tell us to like a hero because he's just male, right? And the same goes the other way too. Yeah, it just I don't that's know. I can't issue, comment on it. I haven't. I literally haven't seen any of these movies. I have not seen any of the new Marvel Me movies, neither. so I don't know what the it. This movie is. I think it's the messiest movie the MCU's ever had. It is. It, have you watched it? it? Incomprehensible. Yeah, I watched it. Did you, did you did I'm you see it opening night? I did was see it, it opening night. It was oh. it was awful. Was it packed? No, it was me and five other see, people. It see, was could not- you imagine a Marvel movie coming out during the Infinity War saga or even just before the Infinity War saga and saying opening night was not packed? That that, that would just uh, it happened a couple of times, but not like this. Yeah, it was it was barren. Yeah. Another reason you can't blame just sexism, by the way, like you can't say, oh, they just hate women is Ant-Man also flopped. The last one, Ant-Man and the Quantum mm-hmm. Mania or whatever the hell it's called. That's a guy and it still sucks because, hey, why is this guy cool? Ants. Great. Who the fuck wants to see this? And now they're talking about reviving Iron Man's character and yeah, they're desperate. that other lady. Yeah. Black Widow. Yeah. Anyway, they're trying to revive they're, they're the Infinity to. Wars characters, which why wouldn't you don't they? Know, they might. Maybe they are that desperate. Why not? Yeah, why wouldn't they? I just don't. I don't you, think it would. It'd work. Like it's desperate, sure. Then they're desperate, but I, it wouldn't save them. They don't have a direction. It's the only thing they feel they probably can do, though. Maybe, but I, I just don't see them actually doing that. Plus, it's not like those rumors have any like real substance behind them. They're just like general rumors, from what I understand. Unless there's more yeah. that's come out recently. Um, I think it, I think it potentially would work for the movie, but it wouldn't save the MCU overall. Like that movie itself might like people might go see it for the gimmick of seeing Iron Man again, but I think there's just a serious execution problem at Marvel currently. I think their plans ended at the end of Endgame, and they didn't have a solid foundation for future movies to build off of they didn't know what to do beyond that so they've just been throwing a lot of shit at the wall again i don't know i haven't i haven't watched these movies because i was just i was i was done after endgame i was like these movies are pretty much all the same i feel like i'm watching the same thing each time so i'm just gonna stop oh yeah for sure and somehow again it just the novelty has worn off it was fun initially with iron man and the hulk and whatever like even captain america and the team was just getting assembled it was the beginning it was fun and now every movie that comes out you're like how how is this like 10 years after iron man and somehow yeah. looks worse like yeah it's still fancy yeah, it's and a- we're in outer space and it's the multiverse but it doesn't look that good anymore and frankly it's kind of i don't know stagnant it's the, like it's VFX not even visually just impressive overworked anymore. Yeah, it's just it's is that the, what the it teams is, are or they're just fucking overworked. Yeah, actually getting no, lazy too. No. Like uh, whatever. I mean, no. do we really? It's also like unsustainable. It's not just no, overwork. It's that. like unsustainable timeframes. I'm sure they've got so many projects, especially with TV and stuff. They're putting yeah. these teams on really short leashes, 
in short time frames that they just can't can't do. Yeah, bro, because they have like I know. 30, 30 TV shows and 30 movies coming out every year. Like, hey, you, are you done with this secret invasion? What? I haven't even started the intro yet. But fucking AI, we need you on the Marvel <laughs> stat or you're fired. And the guy's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I do think I do mess. think their their move to a uh, Disney Plus like that that kind of you know frequent content has really hurt them in the long run cuz I just oh I think it has ruined them yeah so like one thing about the marvels is there's like two shows worth of prerequisite knowledge you need to have going into it otherwise you don't know the characters so I watched WandaVision it was okay so I was familiar with one of the characters in there, but if I didn't see it, I wouldn't yeah. even know who that is or why she has powers. And Miss Marvel, which I didn't watch, but the luckily the movie does a good job with her character that bring you into it. But that's the like it's so much you have to do homework yeah. to go see the new Marvel movie. Yeah, it's there's not no jumping fun. in point really because they're just so interconnected. And again, I think I think like the pre Infinity War period did that way better because it was like what maybe two movies a year, right? So you you could you could yeah, you could follow yeah, yeah, something you like could that. follow along a lot easier. easier, and you could even miss out on a few if they weren't directly connected to the Avengers storyline, and you wouldn't feel like you missed too much. Um, whereas after that, it's like there's six TV shows a year that you have to keep up with, and then by that point, if you haven't watched them, why watch the new movie? Because you just don't, you won't know what's going to happen. It yeah. feels like homework. That's what Charlie said. Yeah, absolutely. It feels like homework. And there's so many that even if you did like Marvel, you're not going to like every single show that they release. And yet it feels like you have to watch every single one just to be able to keep up with the, where's the story? Maybe they should just give you a recap. Because of the there's so many, the they've gotten like way less quality control now, which means that most of them are just bad. So why would I watch these? Why would I? commit myself to this kind of massive timeline of shit where like maybe 80% of the things you're putting out are just schlock. Like I, I'm just not going to get invested. Yeah. I mean, it's the age of problem of no bro. I promise this anime <laughs> gets super good at episode 1000. It's like, well, even if that's true, I don't know if that's worth my time sitting down to watch a thousand episodes of Marvel yeah. slop. It's just too tedious at this point to uh, give me a new entry Man, the point, last, please. I think what they should do, but what should have happened after in game is they should have gone back to like the old formula yeah. of self-contained superhero movies that don't connect, like keep everything fully separate and tell your own unique stories there. Kind of like with uh, what DC does with Batman, like the uh, Christopher Nolan's Batman movies, they mm -hmm. don't connect anything except themselves. And now the new The Batman isn't like a DCU movie either. At least I don't think it is, but I think they're doing their own universe with that. But regardless, like keeping things more separated and as opposed to trying to make it all a continued which world, is, uh, I think which is, is much kind of hilarious considering the connected game. world is what gave Marvel the kind of, you know, the, the jump into popularity originally in the first place. Yeah. So I don't even blame them for continuing that because that's how they found their success originally. Yeah, they needed to try, but it clearly didn't yeah. work. They didn't have any direction. I think maybe that's the biggest problem. They didn't have a real yeah, idea I mean, I, on I, where I to take it. They executed Infinity War and Endgame that period really well. And then I, I think that was literally just their Endgame. I think mm -hmm. that's, that's all they had planned. And now they're like, fuck, what do we do? <laughs> Ironically enough, uh, Shang-Chi Shang and The Legend of the Ten Rings, my favorite post-Endgame Marvel movie so far. Like that, that one was highly yeah, enjoyable so and it really wasn't connected to the rest of the stuff all, all too much, you know? So that kind of speaks to what you're kind of saying, I think. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think so. I think so. I'm curious to see where they go next. 2024 only has one Marvel movie coming out because all the others got delayed to 2025 or something. So we'll see. No way. Just one was, movie. What is it? Mm hmm. Just one. Um, I don't remember which one is it. Let me see. Is it Blade? No, Blade's 2025. Oh, it's Deadpool 3 yeah. for next year. That's the only one. I, I I don't know. I've kind of gone off Deadpool now as well. Yeah, what, Deadpool hasn't been anything since I, the second I one, like which them, I think I remember I you liking. Kind of look back at that and don't see what I saw originally, I think. It's kind of lost the gimmick to me. It can still be a little fun. No, I haven't rewatched it. Did you rewatch it, it or something? It's just I... I I'm looking back on my original <laughs> memory. Back on, just I'm just upset. I'm, I'm looking. 
They're not terrible. Well, well, okay, to be fair, you have a terrible memory. I don't know what <laughs> Man, you, you have, like, literally have a horrible memory. memory. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just I just don't remember being like amazed at Deadpool two. I remember thinking it was even back then. I think it, I, I remember thinking it was a step back from the first one. No, it wasn't great. The only great character is if you have fun actors. The guy who plays Thanos also played one of the antagonists in Deadpool mm, two. Yeah, Cable. The guy who can time travel in his body. It's Cable? Kane. Yeah, yeah, Cable. that guy. Mark Kane. Josh yeah, Brolin. I forget what the actor's name is. Like, that guy's fun to watch and whatnot, but the plot was boring. I think the... What was the... It was like some chubby kid who can throw fireballs or something. And the whole story was about that kid. And it was yeah, just but I, not that even, even like Deadpool's humor, I think, is just pretty... Like, I don't know if I could do three movies of it. It was fun and gimmicky at the beginning. I kept telling you that it is the same thing like they give that actor the same lines in every movie watch blade 3 he's the same in that one too he plays mm. a vampire that teams up with blade in blade 3 which is the worst of this uh trilogy it just shit cock dick cunts ha 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 funny i said the c word yeah. i'm cursing it's literally just his character is all that all of his writing and it's it does get old for sure but i uh, got like deadpool 3 i guess do you guys know about this movie, Madame Web? I looked up 2024 Marvel movies and Madame Web. I, Madame Web? I, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying, Madame, but yeah, Madame Web. Madame. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's supposed to be coming out February 16th of next year, and I haven't heard a peep about this. It's a full blown movie, though. Yeah, I, I remember there was a. Which Spider Man game was it? I think it was Shattered Dimensions, maybe, that had Madame Webb as a main antagonist. I think, if I'm recalling correctly. Oh, this lady it was one was, of those early. Uh, she was also in the cartoon. Oh, well, I didn't watch the cartoons. My only exposure to her was, was, like, was a game, and I remember thinking it was pretty cool. So maybe that'll be good. Maybe. Uh, first, I've heard of it. Also, I just looked it up again. So even though Marvel. Like MCU movies, the only one is Deadpool 3. There's Madam Web in February, Deadpool 3, July, Venom 3, November, Craven the Hunter in August, and a couple of TV shows like Echo. Ugh. So Marvel's still going to have a packed superhero year. It's, it's, like, it's like I'm looking yeah. at fucking yeah. homework right now. Somebody posted a screenshot of upcoming movies and it's. Madam Web, Deadpool, Thunderbolts, Craven the Hunter, Captain America, something something, Fantastic Four again, Blade, Avengers, the the fuck are the Thunderbolts? I it's probably a kids thing, I would guess. Craven the Hunter, yeah, they really are like scraping the barrel, right? Yeah, now. who's Kang? Surely he's the main antagonist. They set up to be like the new Thanos. Yeah, but then the guy playing Kang uh, is a domestic abuser or something and is currently <laughs> under uh, police investigation. So they've had to... I can't see They've had to coming. recast it. I don't think the Kang... <laughs> Kang the abuser. I don't think Kang... I don't think Kang is happening anymore. Wait, I, I think they've said that they're... They, they, can't, they can't shelf Kang, but they're going to recast him, I think. Yeah, well, yeah. why don't they just recast them? That should be fine. Yeah, especially because it's only in like one movie. <laughs> yeah. It's Jonathan Majors. Jonathan Majors' domestic violence trial. So what, he beat his wife? Why would he do this? This is so crazy. That, like somebody gets such a windfall, such a break in life, and they just cannot help themselves being a piece of shit. You're getting paid millions of dollars to appear in one of the most f popular franchises in human history. And how are you still mad enough you being successful shouldn't be that's the not my point. You from abusing your that's wife. not my point. My point <laughs> yeah, is, know, how are you funny. still this angry when you're like going yeah. through your day to day? Right? It's, it's like if you, whenever you see like a rich celebrity yelling at a barista on like you know paparazzi cameras, yeah. it's like how the fuck are you freaking out? You're rich. You're free. Why are you this wound up and angry at anything? That's great. Oh man, ego. They think they can get away with anything, and also maybe just like to some weird degree like biology <laughs> like maybe they're just born to be aggressive and abusive douchebags yeah i like guess something I fundamentally guess. broken like snapping at paparazzis that i get because they harass your family and your children and whatnot that i understand i never you know uh britney spears snapping and screaming at the cameras while she's all bald and whatnot sure but like beating your own wife 
after you land a role like this, what the fuck? I don't know. Just yeah. that seems like more of a popping champagne moment than oh you stupid bitch, where's my dinner? Well, maybe he was <laughs> again. Maybe uh, he's been he's been famous for a while though. I was gonna say maybe he was beating his wife before beforehand as well. Maybe, but, I mean, the I abuse mean, allegations just, span years apparently, so it's not exactly yeah. like a one and he's just done a piece of kind shit. of thing. Mm. Is it confirmed or is it allegations? I, it's all I'm allegations. Not sure. Nothing's confirmed yet. I don't think he hasn't gone to trial. Well, allegedly, he's a piece of shit then. And, and that, that, even if he's found innocent, I don't think it's going to affect him continuing in the Marvel or, or them continuing his role in the Marvel you know, ecosystem. I think oh, yeah, I doubt it. He, he's not going to be playing Kang regardless. Why, this is what I don't understand. How the, fuck, how the fuck did the Flash continue being the Flash, but this shit happens? Like, there was know. so much evidence against the Flash, and he, that movie's still fucking released. I have no idea. Well, because they'd already filmed everything. They they couldn't sideline it anymore, I guess. They should have, but they didn't. Yeah, well, but that's kind of like my point. Like, um, if you're if you're gonna take the moral standing of saying, Oh, this we we can't we can't endorse this, you know, we can't have a bad person in these movies, which fair enough. He's a, he's punching women and Ezra Miller was kidnapping children or something. Um in that case, fair enough. But then just don't put out the movie then. Like you, you clearly just like money more than the morals that you say you have at that point. You could salvage it somehow. You could like, I guess you can't actually. He was, he was so swapped. Like every shot involved him. No, nah, if you, you, you can just recast him. He is literally multiversal. <laughs> like he, he could easily just be recast. Like I'm Kang from Dimension fifteen five five one. And it's just a totally different guy. It's just, I don't know, Josh Brolin again. I have no idea. But, like, you can easily <laughs> recast him. Yeah, actually, the multiverse, I, I, they're going to bring Thanos back, surely. If Iron Man's coming back, it's good. we're just going to get Endgame uh, again. Infinity uh, War again. Is this hell? Are we going to be stuck in an endless loop of the multiverse? <laughs> it's never ending. Here's another Spider-Man, but he has a sombrero and a mustache. He's fighting Thanos, but this time <laughs> Thanos is a wrestler. <laughs> Ugh. Yes. And this fat, please, I beg you. You know what I want to see a sequel to is Alita Battle Angel. It is a Oh, did you did, did you finally watch it? What do you mean finally? I, I saw it when it came out. I it's one what of my the favorite fuck? I, movies. I've been I've been singing the praises <laughs> of that movie since it came out and you've never chimed in once when I talked about that movie. That movie's amazing. No, you have a bad memory. I did when it when we talked about this before, around the time it came did out. Did we? We were we both liked it, yeah. Alita Battle Angel is a very fun. I have never read the manga or anything, but it is a fun movie. For sure. I always love Christoph and, Waltz. And you know what? You know mm. what? what? Female protagonist. See That's Marvel, right. it can be done. It can be done. <laughs> God, Alita but is no. so fucking good. I need to rewatch it. It is such a good movie. It is it's very fun. fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The fight scenes were pretty fucking awesome in that. And the visuals. Yeah, the fight racing scene at the end, which like I don't want to spoil a lot, but it's basically like roller derby for cyborgs, essentially, that takes place in the future. Um, it also has Maharshala mm-hmm. Ali. Is it Maharshala? Maharshala Ali? Whatever. The new Blade that's going to come out in 2025, mm-hmm. I guess. It was the perfect cast, but I'm sure they'll fumble that somehow too, since it's Marvel. Um, Classic Marvel. What else we got? What else happened this week? Breaking news from from yesterday. Did you guys see that? Apparently, uh, do you guys know the YouTuber, the Completionist? Yeah, I was just about to bring that up. Yeah, he's he's a big he, he's been a big YouTuber for like a decade now. He he basically completes video games as the name suggests, and then posts about it. Uh, he he had a charity called the Open Hand Foundation. And it was set up to kind of like support Alzheimer research because his mother sadly passed away from Alzheimer's. Um, and so through some investigative work by Carl, it's Carl Jobs, isn't it? That's, that's his name. And Mudahar. Yeah, and Mudahar, friend of the show. Uh, they discovered that, I'm not going to say the, fa- the charity has been pocketing the money because I don't think that's technically true from what they discovered. I think it's more like the charity has been holding on to the money and not been like giving it to the charities. It's just yeah. been in a bank account sitting there uh, 
and they've been they've been saying that it's been going to charities and stuff, but it actually hasn't. Yeah, they're not pocketing it. Uh, there's people running with that headline. That's not what Mudahar nor Carl's investigation was claiming. Since it's a charity, all of their records are public, so you can see what money comes in, what money gets spent, and what money goes out. And yeah. the Open Hand Foundation, they do like work to try and fight against dementia. And what happened is, when they went through those papers, they found that none of that money that had been donated over the last nine years ever left the bank account except to pay for like operating expen- expenses, which mm, aren't listed, yeah. which is very oh. peculiar. That's and, yeah. um, that part about That's a very like, nice expenses. way of putting it as peculiar, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's basically a trust fund. <laughs> I mean, at that point. Yeah, actually I didn't I didn't even consider that point. They did they do specify that money has been going out for expenses. What is stopping those expenses from being the part where they're pocketing the money? You well, they they don't list them, so that's why there'd be an audit. Uh, I'm gonna work for a charity and this is my salary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a form of pocketing. What did you say then, Charlie? Sorry, I said that that's why they're probably needing to be audited because uh, when they yeah. break down what money gets spent, th- it is literally just a bucket that says like operating costs or something like expenses. They don't specify what expenses they're incurring, so you can't do that. Like that's bad form. So it's it's all very fishy. But six hundred yeah. something thousand dollars is still just sitting in that bank account for the foundation and none of it's left to any dementia research fighting programs or anything would and it's also uh, as carl and mudaha pointed out it's also weird because they've spent the last five years talking about how they've been contributing money to these these organizations yeah. and supporting mm. these organizations uh so it's it's extremely weird to see that the money like hasn't actually been going to these organizations and carl reached out for comment with the with the uh, open hands organization which is headed by the completionist brother i think it was um and he responded saying that basically their support had been giving what was it giving bodies for research or something like that what I, I don't I don't remember that. Was it was that it was in Car- it, yeah, it was in Carl's video. It was something about like they had donated bodies. So I'm assuming maybe uh that was the, potentially the mother, but I'm not I'm not sure. Regardless, they they say that like that was their support and all the, the money is has been kept in their account because they haven't found the right way of utilizing it yet to a yeah. charity. So that's that's also what the completionist himself said in the interview he was uh, doing. So another important component is this isn't them that didn't reach out for comment. They didn't just post this without trying to get their side of it. They talked to the completionist directly, for example, and he himself is also like, oh man, you know, the, yeah, I recognize this is a problem recently. I was actually going to donate the money today is something he said. And it's, it's all like he, he doesn't have an excuse. He also recognizes how bad all of it is, but he's kind of chalking it up to, you know, just a big whoopsie. The way he views it is really fucked up to me where he's just like, I mean, maybe this is something I just have to take the L on, I guess. If you guys want to publish, like I'm a scammer for drama clicks or whatever, which is really so foul because it's, it's not just like a drama thing. This is literally like you're taking money from your community, telling them it's going to this charity or these, uh, these causes. And it doesn't. Like that's very fucked up. Well, at that at that point, you are you are literally stealing from charity from people who desperately need the money. Well, they're not stealing technically, not because it hasn't left. They can still donate it, which they should and absolutely need to. But you are misleading people on where the money's been going. But as Carl said in in his video, it's impossible now to know if this was a long term scheme to pocket the money. Yeah, because now that the information is out there. Whatever they do now is going to look like a reaction to that breaking. So it's yeah, hard to know they, if this is no a matter, scam or not. No matter what they do now, we will never know if they had just planned on keeping that money in there forever or what. We'll, we'll never know. Yeah. I, I, again, like we, we have to look at this in the most simple way, I think. Like what reason would, it, would there to be to keep this money locked away for 10 years more or less like the the charity has been operating for 10 years um to keep that money locked away for so long without contributing a cent like i i don't understand what logical reason there would be for that there 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 isn't a logical reason that what they're saying is they just haven't found the right benefactor and during the interview they did with the completionist he's like you just tell me where you want it to go and i'll do it right now so it's like well that's that's, that's not uh, again the point weird. that's 
Yeah, that's very weird. The, the whole that's point is you've said it's going to... Exactly. What the fuck? Like, you've said it's going <laughs> to these places, so send it to those places. It, you know, it's not me telling you where the money needs to go. For years now, you've said, here's where it's going, but didn't do it, so now yeah. do it. But at that point, it's saying, saying, saying it like that really does make it sound like a desperate ploy to avoid any kind of accountability on the issue. Like, shit, all right, I'll send yeah. it to wherever you want. Just make this go away. Exactly. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and as if it's not his fault, as if it's, like, the viewer's fault. Like, motherfucker, if I knew where it's supposed to go, i just donate to the charity directly. It's your job. You're the YouTuber that I like. You asked us for money to give to you so you can direct it to charities. That's on you. You find yeah. out where. Just give it to the fucking 100%. puppy charity or something if you cannot find anything better. So the point is you weren't supposed to hoard it like Smaug. <laughs> True. You, you cannot fucking trust YouTubers and charities, man. It's just always suspicious. I, re- I agree. Why. I agree with that. I, at, at the best, I, I think with the information that is out there, uh, Gerard or the completionist is unaware of everything. Um, that's at best, like, oh, willfully ignorant, I guess. At worst, I think he's complicit in this. And I do think that personally, from the information that was put out, um, it does seem extremely fishy that this money didn't go anywhere over 10 years. 10 years is like a ridiculous amount of time to find somewhere to send the fucking money. Personally, I feel as though the completionist must have known the money wasn't going places, but like... Their reason is like, oh, you know, some charities might not be trustworthy. We have to find the, the perfect like benefactor. <laughs> like that's I mean, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I Come guess. On. But like, I feel like the completionist had to have known the money hadn't been leaving, yet he still would go on streams and do fundraisers exactly. claiming that all this money is going to these causes. It's going there. This is how great it's been. This is what's happening. And that's just a blatant lie. Yeah. So he, he claimed... He claimed in twenty. Uh, he claimed in the call with Muta and Carl that he only found out that the money hadn't been sent anywhere back in twenty twenty two. So end of twenty twenty two. Yet this year, uh, he had done his fundraiser thing, his fundraiser event earlier in the year, a few months ago, where they raised even more money. And during that stream and during that fundraiser, he had directly commented and said that uh, commented about their work that they've done in the past again saying that they send them the money to like these organizations like i think one of them was like U- usf or something like that a bunch of different like organizations that they had been helping to contribute to uh, for the research um and that was just obviously if he knew that the money wasn't going anywhere in 2022 um i mean he should just, have done 2023 fundraiser well <laughs> yeah. again and he shouldn't have commented on that in that specific situation saying that yeah no we're we've been sending money for the last 10 years or whatever he he directly commented on it then knowing that it was a lie which again like yeah. this is all just so there's just so many sus elements here that it's hard not to think like sure you haven't pocketed the money directly but was that the eventual goal was it the eventual goal to get to a point where you could just siphon this money out through these expense reports and not have to face any kind of accountability. Like it's, it's, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it's entirely possible. Yeah. Like, again, now we will never know. They're going to eventually donate this money now because of all yeah, of this of 100%. Which is a but good thing. Which never is a good came thing. It's a light. good thing that Carlum, it is a good thing. Muda, uh, you know, put a, put a spotlight on this because, I mean, there was a very real chance that this money wasn't eventually going to charity. And now it definitely exactly. will. That, that, yeah, we will never know if the plan was to continue to build up that purse and eventually just take it all. Yeah. Regardless, it's an extremely we'll take bad it all look. over time. How much was the operating costs? Like how much a year? Ten thousand. I think across nine years, it totaled over a hundred k. Yeah, I think it was like oh, 10, that's not much. 10K a that's year. like a yeah. But yeah. Still, well, no, it was between I like mean, ten and thirty a year. Yeah. That's still suspicious. Like, why? Where is that going? Yeah. What operating costs are there for a charity that doesn't send money? <laughs> like, they're just they're just amassing money. Like, what operating costs are there for that? No. Uh, I guess maybe. Uh, uh, I'll tell you what. You go to a nice restaurant and use the charity credit card because you're talking to an, a potential investor or something. It's yeah. It's bullshit. just free money. Yeah. Well, well, well again, mm-hmm. they didn't. They didn't specify. From what I saw. From what Carl said, I'm not an expert, and from what Muda said, I'm not an expert. They uh they did go through all the the audits or the, the sorry the tax whatever they called the tax forms, um and they said that these just aren't done correctly at all to begin with. There's just yeah, mi- no, missing just there's just missing information everywhere. Uh, I think 
Carl was a bit more direct and said that this kind of seems illegal. <laughs> it borders on illegal and like defraudment because the forms just aren't done correctly. And it's interesting to me because it takes this kind of audit from from YouTubers to figure out this over ten a ten year period. Uh, it it kind of shows to me that like this is probably common and this is probably pretty easy to get away, away with. So it's just kind of made me yeah. It's no doubt more distrustful. It's no doubt common. Like yeah, yeah. It's tons of companies do this in like broad daylight too. Like it's not the most uncommon thing in the world. It's the IRS can only monitor so much they're going to miss a few high profile things like this and and, you know speaking in like broader terms 600k over the course of nine years probably doesn't even register for them because some of the other big fish out there that are doing shit like this are doing millions yeah exactly so um i mean to be fair so youtubers doing it is huge to be fair the irs is busy investigating people who have over 600 dollars worth of money in their accounts and recruiting (laughs) 87,000 new agents I don't know if you guys forgot, but when they were recruiting 87,000 new agents, one of the requirements on the IRS website is was that you have a willingness to use lethal force if necessary. <laughs> they later removed this when people, when people saw this. I am not joking. This was a real thing. <laughs> Trained tax not assassins. Not had can, uh, Kaya. This, not assassins, but yes, if you do work for the IRS, you are an enforcer of the court and the law. That means if you do show up to that person's house... And if you have to sh- fucking shoot them, then you do. <laughs> what the fuck? They removed this re- requirement, but it is still, you can find archived links of the IRS website where they l- list this requirements. But they cannot catch people That's like this. fucking wild. It's like Judge Dredd showing up. We see you were a little short on your tax <laughs> yeah. forms. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> I ha- he, he told him to the police chief. So I had to shoot him. He had an incorrectly signed W-4. <laughs> we don't know what this madman was going to do next. <laughs> He didn't use the correct contractor forms. <laughs> it's so stupid. That's that's fucking great. Why why why'd they remove it? They should have kept that. That's great. <laughs> uh, because people said this is really really creepy. And according, so even Snopes, even Snopes had to admit, yeah, this is true. They say um, special agents are duly sworn law enforcement officers who are trained to follow the money, so to speak. These agents investigate financial crimes, money laundering, tax-related identity theft, and terrorist financing efforts. They are the only IRS workers who are permitted to carry and use firearms. And so according to when the IRS originally listed this, the agents must be prepared to protect themselves or others, quote-unquote, from physical attacks at any time and without warning and use firearms in life-threatening situations, (sighs) unquote. And shouldn't be afraid to, quote, use force up to and including the use of deadly force. Jesus Christ. Like, so they had this just listed there. This was a whole drama because everybody, like voters were genuinely mad. Like why the, the IRS shouldn't be, even be a fucking thing. Why are you hiring 87,000 new ones, new agents? And wait a minute, why are they carrying guns? This was around the same time that they also passed new legislation that anytime you have a transaction more than $600, it has to be reported to the IRS automatically. Yeah. Again, if you have a side hustle on like Stripe because they're selling crap on Etsy, if you have more than $600 worth of a payout, the IRS will know. But this fucking douchebag can have a charity quote unquote for like nine years or whatever the hell you guys said and nobody notices it's up to two other youtubers to figure out what's going on actually that's why the irs is fucking evil there that's my rant sorry all good (laughs) (laughs) you'll get no pushback from me there the irs is fucking wild especially now that they're able to deploy lethal force when you when you sign up for the irs or whatever when you go for the job interview they give you a stapler and a gun how does that work like do you have to take mandatory (laughs) firearm training no they probably have to buy their own gun and then report it to the other agents like it's probably just going to be like a business expense kind of thing so it's it's just for self-defense then i guess like like they're like yeah Yeah. you can take a gun on these cases i didn't even know that the irs like physically goes out to places to like arrest i guess or what like Hand over audits? Investigate, Oh, I yeah, guess. maybe investigations, like audits in real life. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, the IRS involves a lot of criminal stuff, obviously, money laundering, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? If you have a criminal organization, it does make sense that some of their agents are literally tasked with, look, uh, you might get shot at. I thought that would be, like, kind of uh, assisted by other departments that are more, ha- like, suited to that. I thought the IRS was just, like, bean counters, basically. 
like the people that just take the forms at the end of the day and make sure that they're authentic. At the end of the day, here's how it really works. The government owns you and you're yes, their pay yes, pick yes. tax slave. And if you don't pay them your 600 bucks, they shoot you in the fucking skull in front of your children. And that's the end of it. It's really as much. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but all the other stuff around it that they tell you, the reason is like, no, no, it's for against criminal organizations. And, you know, our agents have to defend themselves. Blah, 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 blah. No, it's just it's to shoot you. You specifically. Are you, are you allowed to say this? I hate these people so much. The yes. IRS is going to investigate Kaya now just off of his claims. <laughs> what I'm saying is he does live in America now. If they're willing to kill you, they're willing to deport you. I'm going to get swatted. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd, I'd be uh, careful. You're, you're... Let's move on to something more fun. Jackson told me before we started the show that you have some funny quotes pulled. Oh, yeah. Let's so I didn't, I didn't want to do... Before I get yeah, swatted. I don't want you getting deported or anything. Um, yeah, so I, I was talking to Kaya about this beforehand, but um, I didn't want to make it a boogie centric episode, so I just pulled some quotes that I found really funny because I was I was researching him and I found his old porn blog post that uh, everyone knows about now, and just some of the quotes just really like ex- yeah accent that he sorry that he brags about by the way during job interviews yeah yeah I mean it's not like anybody found it he was very open about it from the beginning so these quotes are from the porn blog and they're just fucking great they're just a really fantastic insight into the psyche of boogie especially back in 2006 and really still to this day because he from what he said in the documentary and stuff how he views women hasn't really changed so this first one uh so yeah boogie's porn blog it's a personal web journal of an adult pornographer that's what he self-classified himself as random assortment of porn rants and celebrity news and nudity it really was just all that like 90 percent of the blog posts were just links to other porn blogs and like uh, just porn pictures, obviously, and so and this is these are from two thousand six, two thousand yeah. So just way. just for some clarification, mm-hmm. two thousand six, Boogie was a thirty three year old man. Uh, he was running this porn site from from his home. This was around the same time that YouTube started, probably or three years. Was that earlier. a question? And, yeah. And to clarify, by the way. In 2006, he was still 13 years older than his girlfriend <laughs> yeah. is today. Just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> so gross. So, uh, so from Boogie's About You section, I just grabbed this just so we can see who he kind of defined himself as at at the time. Uh, the question says, so who are you? And he says, I'm Boogie. I've been in the adult web business since 1998. I'm poor because I'm not very good at it. Yet it beats working nine to five. <laughs> so I think... He he was. This was kind of like a dream job, and kind of like how he avoided getting a job. Maybe I doubt it made much money though. Even back in two thousand six, this was after the dot com bubble. So I really, I really no. don't think he made that much money. But he still did it, and he still thinks that it it solved his you know nine to five problem. All right. So a lot of the posts that he would post, like I said, the blog posts were just a bunch of links to porn galleries. Most of them I noticed were erotic teens. Uh, categorized <laughs> like he definitely had a fetish for erotic teens which is just gross and so this is one of the posts I'll, I'll read it right now talking about a uh, woman who had reached out for ad, like an advertisement for him and it just kind of shows how he kind of viewed women I got an email from her today along with a pass for a site for me to use to scope it out and I was damn glad I did She's got a nice back end on her site, alwayspamela.com. She does fan signs for members as well as takes photo shoot requests. I'm going to get a fan sign for the blog or maybe send in a boogieblog.com t-shirt for her to pose in. Well, almost nude. She's such a fucking tease. It's good to be boogie. That's how he ended it. (laughs) It sure is good to be boogie. (laughs) <laughs> that didn't yeah. age well. <laughs> nothing, nothing here <laughs> ages well, even for 2006. All right, so do you want to read? Uh, this is the next one. Boogie arguing about the 2006 sexiest woman list done by I think it was a magazine called FMH or F F F H M. I think. Uh, so you can read that one, Kai, if you want. Okay, the year 2006. The list top 100 sexiest women. The problem. FHM has lost its <laughs> goddamn mind. The number one girl? Are you ready for this? Scarlett Johansson. Now let me say that I thought she looked tolerable in that Lost in Translation film, and she cer- and certainly she's probably better looking than a lot of women, but number one? Please, 
What in the fuck? I mean, yes. I know this was from a reader poll and people who read FHM can't really be held accountable for taste. They read FHM after all. <laughs> but this woman does not deserve to be called sexiest woman in the world. Let's forget that there are women with better bodies and faces and hair doing porn. Shit, forget the fact that there's a girl with a better body sleeping in my fucking <laughs> bed right now. Yeah, right. Let's just focus oh. on the women in Hollywood. Read more about read more about the top 100 sexiest women for 2006 here and while you're t while you're there try and figure out how the fuck Kiera Knightley even gets to work considering she looks like she just crawled out of a concentration <laughs> camp set these plastic fake Jeez. bullshit ugly and nasty hollywood wenches out of your mind and let your manhood tell you who the real sexiest woman of 2006 is so yeah he really yeah, didn't like scarlett so. johansson he was very opinionated about also, what he looks <laughs> no, <laughs> she's back then too. I'm gonna look up 2006. Yeah, she, she's Scarlett she's always Johansson been attractive. Now. I don't know what he's talking so, about. Also, uh, like, yeah, he just lost his mind. That's a was, was, brain he, right was he there. banging LA tens at that point? Was that the chick in the bed? Because I find it hard to believe. No, there's no way because he he wouldn't have had but, the, yeah, the the forty thousand yeah, dollars yeah, yeah, to yeah. spend a year there's on no it. Way. All right, so this next one, this next one is a fantastic one. Boogie's a purveyor of fleshlights. I think, Charlie, you should read this one because you, you, you guys are kind of connected on the whole fleshlight thing. Sure. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I think personally, my fleshlight is a bit better than being with a woman in some ways. No offense. I figured I'd list the reasons. One, it's tighter. Two, it sucks without complaining. Three, it swallows, at least as deep as it can go. Four, when you're done, you can just lock it in a dark place and it can't complain. Five, no need to reciprocate, but ultimately, I just flat out think it feels different, and in some ways better than the real thing. Honestly, there's nothing like it. It's like the first time you pop Mary <laughs> Lou's cherry at 18, or sinking it into your girl's butt for the first time. Not too tight, but oh so right. What the fuck is that, is man? It? This reads exactly like a fourteen-year-old lying yes, about having exactly. had sex before to his friends. Like, yo, I, I, I know what boobs feel like. They're like, uh, uh, like balloons filled with sand. It's so hard to imagine him. At, like, <laughs> he's thirty-two when he's writing this shit. This is like fourteen-year-old fan fiction. <laughs> What the it's like the first time man. you popped Mary Lou's cherry at 18 or sinking into your girl's butt and sinking it into her butt. Not too tight, but oh so right. What is wrong with you? Oh. What does that have to do with a flashlight? This is amazing. Do we know how is is there like an actual confirmed time that Boogie has I lost his virginity? I have no. Kind of there's so many different now. stories from Boogie's past that it's hard to keep track of what is and isn't real. I know. I, I'm not looking for what he said. I wonder if there's just anyone else who's ever said. No. I don't know. All right. So this next one is, I think, my favorite one. It's Boogie at 32 talking about getting a real job. And this is hilarious given that the documentary also waded into this territory. He goes full anime here. Uh, who wants to take this one? Or do you want me to read it? It's up to you guys. You do it. Right, you the fact it? that I'm crazy is no mm. stranger to the good staff at Evil Squared. I think that was another forum that he was working on at the time. Nor is it a strange concept to anyone that reads this site or has viewed my videos. I am, for all intents and purposes, batshit crazy. The past week or so has been different for me. This next week will be doubly so. Out into the real world, looking for real work at a real workplace. Hopefully landing a job this week. At the same time, these normal activities, normals in like quotation marks, these normal activities remind me exactly how insane I am. I wonder if the people interviewing me know what's going on under the surface. While I'm applying for a job entering your data or taking your orders or speaking to your customers, do you know that I, during the previous weekend, we all got together and smoked weed, drank and fucked? Does she know how many orgies I've been to? Or arranged? No. Does she know how many <laughs> girls I watched fucked or fucked myself? Does she know that I'm a monster? Does she know? <laughs> Does she know that I have internet sites that are so disorientating that it would make Satan blush? Does she know that I film more sex than she's likely to have had? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Boogie. You are such a fucking loser. <laughs> he sounds like that. Was it Arcademo or whatever? That that's exactly what the anime monologue guy. Well, yeah. 
It's like they go full anime when they're in the role. Uh, also, mode. he smoked weed. He smoked weed, drank, and fucked. This fucking guy is insane. insane. I mean, this is just the depra- depravity. Satan would be jealous. Has Satan ever <laughs> drank alcohol and had sex? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, he he's not the kind of guy. He's straight edge. He wouldn't do that. This is so funny. This is how he actually pictures himself. But he's just trying to impress people on his porn blog. It's it's so fucking. It's so sad. Yes, he does the same thing today. Still, well, like in the documentary, the way it ends, where he goes to do shrooms in the forest or whatever. You just know the next day. Just I I am sure that for the next seventeen game nights with his nerd friends. They never stop hearing about how enlightened he is. And you guys wouldn't get it. Yeah. I did drugs also some, in the dark. And then me and my girlfriend yeah, had Slipped sex. it in her butt for the first time. It was great. Uh, so, so there was also, <laughs> there was also another moment uh, in the extended documentary. Like I had watched clips that uh, the director, Mike Klum, put together. And he, he fucking pissed himself during the, the shrooms trip. He actually pissed himself. I don't know why they didn't make it into the cut. I feel like he's just blaming the shrooms because uh, at that point, when you're that big, don't you? Yeah, probably. Aren't you like incontinent at that point? This last one um, is about a strip club adventure that he went on. Also, just just so you guys know, I, I spent like five minutes on the website and this is what I found. Like there was so many other posts that I just didn't have time to go into. <laughs> we should read a post every week. All right, uh, Kai, you can read this one. All right, this week's Boogie Blast from the past. This is titled Boogie Strip Club Adventure. So, tonight I'd get a call from a good friend out of Oklahoma. She wants to bring her friends down and hang out here in Fayetteville. Maybe hit a strip club or whatever. I had a splitting headache and other plans, but one of her friends got on the phone and told me to get my ass down there, so I finally got dressed and headed out. Usual deal at that club. The girl I was, the girl I was with was cuter than most of the dancers that night. One girl had a big sore on her ass. It was crazy. So anyways, at one point when the music was all quiet, somehow someone stood up and said, there sure are a lot of Mexicans in here tonight, end quote. And well, before you know, it fits, its fists were flying. Fucking crazy. My first thought was, oh shit, someone's gonna get shot. And my second thought was, sex and violence all in one place? This is the best <laughs> night of my life. And the truth of the matter is, it was. Something about fearing for my life made my dick just that Ugh. much harder. The highlight of the night, though, was when the lady I'd come with was getting some play from one of the dancers, and they had a breast <laughs> comparison contest. <laughs> yep. You actually you made all this shit, shit up. up. <laughs> yeah. Oh. The- <laughs> no, you can't make this up, Jackson. It's yeah, you too, literally it's can. too hard to even envision something like the this. The lady I... <clears throat> The lady I came with, one by a mile two. Yeah, the number, one spelled O N E, by the way. A winky face. One girl there was really sweet, one of the strippers. She said she was new and told me her real name. She held my hand when I tipped her. She showed me her <laughs> vagina and smiled. I, I, <laughs> Yes, Why like did he at child. least like imagine like imagining his fan fiction, I liked like, her a lot. You know, fucking her or something. He, instead, it's she showed me her vagina and smiled. That's the best you could do, Boogie. Yeah, just tee hee. Here's my pussy. <laughs> this is this is actually like a horny little child writing like erotica for the first time in their lives. And then I saw boobies, <laughs> and they were round and hot. Um, I told her I'd come back in some time during the week when it wasn't so busy if she'd like to talk a bit and she said and she said that it'd be real nice I think I'll have her pictures up on the sites before the month is out so watch out for them yeah it's just, it's just every single post every single blog post that he writes he imagines himself as some kind of like womanizing badass who's able to get pussy just constantly it's so funny it's so hilarious and just the way he writes, it's like, like you said, it's perpetually like a, you know, fucking high school guy. And it's evident from every single sentence that he has zero experience with literally anything. It's, it actually sounds like he doesn't even watch porn. Like, it almost sounds that he's so inexperienced, he doesn't even know what the female body looks like. I can, I can attest, I can attest to Boogie's porn usage. Every single blog post had pictures of like vaginas and stuff. He definitely, he's porn, he's Kuma brain. I know, I know. He was like early stage Kuma brain. Well, early time period (laughs) Kuma brain. 
<laughs> yeah, he was one of the first no, pioneer. He was. Porn pioneer. Has he addressed this? Has he ever just plain up admitted, yeah, I used to be really No, because he still does. Shit, he, still do- he still makes up shit. He hasn't changed in that regard. Like, he, he's like, that's true. He's switched streams in the last five years, maybe not recently because he hasn't been streaming, but like, he would make these kinds of jokes in quotation marks just frequently, like juvenile humor stuff, like potty humor, basically, just really childish shit. So he was constantly joking about that, even during like the 2010s and stuff. So I really don't think he's all too different. And again, he's 32 here. Like you, you're beyond the point where you're meant to have grown up. That, that kind of shit's permanent from that point on, I feel. I don't think he would have changed that much from then. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, at that point, it's like your brain is settled, yeah. right? All the gray and white matter is in place, fully developed. And this is, yeah. this is the end result. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he, it's he's all downhill insane. from here, just, and it makes it so much funnier because while he was writing these blogs, that same year he launched Boogie, and the whole nice guy persona took over instead. So, it it is funny, and <laughs> that is kind of funny. Just, this guy won a game award for being the nicest gamer or whatever, Mister Rogers of the internet, and here he is on a fucking internet forum that he owned and operated, talking about Scarlett Johansson looking like she crawled out of a. Uh, concentration camp <laughs> shit like that <laughs> he said that about Kiara Knightley don't misrepresent him yeah that's true he's just he's porn rotted brain that's all he can't see their pussy in their ass so they're valueless no, he's to just him. negging that this is his persona yeah. he's because we're supposed to imagine that he's such a Chad that even Scarlett Johansson is like a mid ugly bitch to him or yeah, was- what did he say he just kept insulting them. Like ugly concentration yeah. camp, dumb bitch. So every wench. time, I, I want you listeners out there to remember this. Every time you read one of these kinds of comments online, where it's just fucking deplorable, chauvinistic, misogynistic, just fucking cringe, uh, it's Boogie on the other end, basically. It's someone like Boogie, who's not, who's not nearly as cool <laughs> as the words make him seem, trust me. Oh, and the market has changed. I mean, it's not just uh, your career... These guys, today, this comes in the form of pickup artists selling courses on their websites, right? But it, behind every yeah. one of those, almost yeah. every one of those is, again, boogie. Yeah, Yeah. stop taking Correct. advice from them, <laughs> seriously. True. <laughs> that was a good, that was a fun way of ending it. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this episode of The Official Podcast. Patreon.com slash The Official Podcast for bonus episodes, bonus content. And head on over to the YouTube channel if you're not already there because... Uh, we should have a new series up. Myself, Charlie, and Wendy Goon investigated the elusive and extremely famous goat man in the new series, The Red Thread. So that should be up by the time this, uh, well, it should be up the day after this comes up, pretty much. I'm pretty sure that's what we're going to aim for. And also, Criminally Stupid has been doing fantastic. Thank you guys for watching Criminally Stupid. Uh, we've been having, Kyra and myself have been having a lot of fun with that. So, yeah, if you haven't watched it yet, go check it out. We've got a fantastic episode yeah. coming out soon that all of our patrons absolutely loved. They, they think it was their favorite episode yet. So we can't wait to show you that. Um, yeah, patreon.com slash the official podcast, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.